reversal of vertical band gastroplasty by Drs. Kim, Riva, Stolakia, and Nin Nguyen, University of California, Irvine, and this will be presented by Dr. Kevin Rivas. Thank you. Hey, could we get uh, the video up from UC Irvine? I'll thank their, uh, Dr. Dezeal and Dr. Uh, Lomenzo for the uh, privilege of the podium, and thank you to Sages for inviting us to present our video. Yeah, exactly. There we are. My fellow also, like uh, Dan's, wasn't able to make it, so I'll be presenting. Um, this is a laparoscopic transgastric uh, uh, reversal of vertical band of gastroplasty. It starts with a 50-year-old female who 15 years ago was uh, morbidly obese, and she underwent a vertical banded gastroplasty. Unfortunately, over the last couple of years, she de developed dysphagia to both solids and liquids. So earlier this year, she saw a, uh, another surgeon. He was able to revise her a little bit. Uh, he was able to take out her uh, band, uh, left the staple line in place. It was a silastic band, so he was able to, to tease it out and free it up. However, she, it was still refractory to, uh, um, to both endoscopic dilation in terms of dysphagia. So she's admitted to that referring facility for dehydration and failure to thrive with a functional gastric outlet obstruction. You can see on this uh, upper uh, barium esophagram and follow through that there's a proximal gastric pouch, a stenotic area, and a distal gastric pouch. Now the stenosis doesn't look too tight, but it was essentially functioning as a functional gastric outlet obstruction. So she was referred to our tertiary center and she was medically optimized. Uh, we offer a laparoscopic, possible open, transgastric reversal of her vertical band of gastroplasty with upper endoscopic guidance. So she's taken to the operative theater, placed in supine position and prepped. And we started with two five millimeter ports and a 12 millimeter uh, left-sided uh, perambilical port as shown in this diagram. Now after significant adhesiolysis of the uh, uh, perigastric adhesions, we were able to line up ergonomically a, another 12 millimeter uh, trocar, which was going to be our stapler uh, placement site uh, going into the stomach and then on into the, uh, uh, to take care, take down the uh, uh, stenosis. So this is our upper endoscopy, um, actually proceeding from the gastric pouch through the stenotic area into the uh, distal gastric pouch. And we do uh, endoscopy with nearly all of our operations. Uh, simultaneously, my partner, Nen Nguyen, is uh, uh, performing the laparoscopic lysis of adhesions, which are fairly extensive. Both the proximal gastric pouch, the stenotic area, and the distal gastric pouch were fairly uh, adherent. You can see we're simply just taking down adhesions here. Uh, it took a little while, uh, about 45 minutes, to do this portion of the operation in terms of taking down adhesions, but eventually we were able to free up both the proximal and the distal aspects of the stomach, as well as, uh, again, that stenotic area. In the meantime, again, I'm up uh, running the endoscope and we're able to go down and, and uh, see the pylorus and antrum retroflex and, and see both the stenotic area as well as the uh, uh, proximal uh, pouch area. And you can see we're actually uh, uh, with both laparoscopic and endoscopic guidance and uh, transmural uh, illumination, we're able to kind of line up where we're going to put that fourth trocar. Um, I think it's kind of like carpentry. You have to measure two, three times, and then you know cut once. So you measure a couple of times to make sure you're going to be right in line, because uh, if you geo geometrically misplace this trocar, it's going to be a real um, pain in the rear in order to take down this uh, area of stenosis. So uh, with retroflexion, you can kind of see the transabdominal uh, palpation and, tra and transgastric palpation with the instruments, and we're just kind of lining up, poking, prodding, making sure that this uh, trocar is going to be right in line. We then used a dilating uh, trocar, as you can see here, poking through the abdominal wall and through the gastric wall, uh, and dilating up to 12 millimeters. And again, remember the silastic band is gone from the stomach, so uh, we don't have to worry about coming across a bunch of marlex or, or silastic tissue. We then line it up again, uh, initially practice with a grasper, and then a 60 millimeter load uh, stapler is then threaded right along the endoscope and the, uh, the stenotic area, basically that bridged area, the old staple line from 15 years ago. Uh, we kind of check back and forth just to make sure that we weren't uh, going to enter something else. We then go with anti-flexed uh, endoscopy to confirm the pylorus is there. There's the incensura. Uh, we're in a safe area. We went ahead and fired the stapler, opened things up. So now you can see that it's uh, wide open and uh, it, it's a slight bit narrowed, but uh, certainly nothing like it was before. Easy passage of the endoscope from the proximal pouch into the distal pouch and uh, and on down, checking out the, uh, the antrum and pylorus. So you can see here at the end, we've got a hemostatic staple line, wide open passage. 
the uh, trocars were then all direct, all removed under direct visualization. Because of the dilating aspect of that trocar, it contracts down real nicely, pretty much just a, uh, um, a two-layer uh, imbricated suture line was used to close the uh, gastrotomy. And cut, then each of the uh, trocar sites, uh, we uh, close just at the level of the skin, again, because of the dilating aspects of the trocars. So the overall operation, about 45 minutes of adhesiolysis, 45 minutes of measuring and then cutting, uh, 90 minutes total, estimated blood loss about 10 milliliters, and no noted operative complications at the time. You can see a, a follow-up barium esophagram follow, uh, follow through the next day, in which there's a smooth contrast passage from the proximal stomach on through the distal stomach and into the small bowel, and uh, she was much relieved. So we uh, place them on uh, clear liquids while they're in the hospital. They go home on full liquids for about uh, two weeks. So she went home on post-operative day number two. Her obstructive symptoms had resolved. Well, we saw her back at two weeks, and we slowly advanced her diet back to regular, just like we do all of our bariatric patients. And uh, since then, she's been functioning well on a bariatric diet with uh, no dysphagia to uh, solids or liquids. So thank you for your time. Uh, Dr. Rivas, I'm curious why you, you chose this uh, as opposed to other options, uh, converting her to a uh, root-wide gastric bypass or even just a gastrogastrostomy if you wanted to reverse the uh, operation altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, can you comment on that? Certainly. Well, um, I think our prior presenters had also mentioned that sometimes distal adhesions secondary to prior open operations is a bit of a, a mild contraindication to a root-wide gastric bypass in terms of that scenario. Um, she wasn't too worried about weight gain. She had adopted very healthy uh, lifestyle habits and such, so that was less of an issue. It was mainly just these obstructive symptoms. She absolutely wanted to have those taken care of, did not want a malabsorptive uh, potential operation, so we opted for something like that. Instead of just converting her to a GG fistula, uh, per se, with a stapled approach, the um, downside of that potentially is that you can have some dyspepsia secondary to the fact that there is some food stuff, turbulence in the stomach proximally with that. Uh, again, what was kind of nice is the fact that we knew the band was gone, so we're just dealing with fairly benign gastric tissue. And in this scenario, although it takes a bit of creativity with uh, an endoscopist and a laparoscopist at the same time, uh, you can avoid a lot of real proximal uh, adhesiolysis because you really just need to free up the distal aspect, make sure you've got a clear shot at that area, and then again with the dilating trocar, and, and a, uh, as long as you're orientated uh, okay, it becomes a fairly simple, again, about 45 minute operation thereafter. So that's why we opted for it. Yeah, it was a very nice video and a nice technique for approaching this problem. Hey, Any thanks. other comments or questions from the audience? If not, we'll move on. Thank you. Thank you.